Let's quickly review the method or technique of using ultrasound to assist in administration of neuroaxial anesthesia. Clearly, neuroaxial anesthesia has huge advantage in COVID-19 epidemic and in elderly people anyway. In some more difficult patients that may be elderly or having spine deformities in particular, neuroaxial anesthesia can be greatly assisted by using ultrasound. Let's watch this video. In this particular situation, we have set up this patient in an upright situation. And here we have a helper person who is holding uh, the patient to assume the best possible flexing position, which is limited in this particular patient. We normally use two hands to palpate the iliac crest uh, in here. But again, the problem with palpation of the iliac crests that you never actually know. What appears to be L4, L5, particularly in patients with a large amount of adipose tissue, it is almost impossible to actually estimate. What I typically suggest for all residents that we teach is it doesn't matter which method you use to determine what the level of the spinal anesthesia is, where you're going to introduce your needle. What you really always want to exercise is a common sense. What I mean by that is divide the length of the spine into three parts. This would be your upper part, this would be a middle part, and this is the lower part. If you really always make sure that you're performing the neuroaxial anesthetic in this lower part, the chances are very small, if any, that you're going to be performing this technique at the point where you can get neuroaxial injury. So that's something that we use routinely with our, when teaching our, our uh, residents. Okay, let's continue on with the, with the video. So what we here, see here is now we're setting up the ultrasound for this. To set up the ultrasound for neuroaxial anesthesia technique, you really want to set up the depth to about six to seven centimeters. Your focus point should be at about between five and six centimeters. And in here what we see also an average gain. Average gain should be set so it's a little brighter image to begin with. You can adjust it accordingly. And in here you can see we're using a curved transducer because we need really wider angle of view, wider field in order to, um, to see all the neuroaxial structures. So here I'm playing with the overall gain structure. Now we increase the uh, gain of the image and we're going to start preparing serial gloves. The ultrasound is set up. Usually we might need to use a couple of pairs of gloves until we're through this technique. That's the povidone iodine, which in our practice is always stained uh, red, so you can always easily recognize which parts of the body you, you have prepped. And we use quite a bit actually of prep solution. You can never be cheap on prepping adequately because the neuroaxial uh, infections, even though they are rare, when they occur, they are not much fun. So we use uh, utmost precautions. Here is one example of um, spinal anesthesia set that we use. I will not say I'm in love with it. I much prefer the transparent uh, drape with the fenestration, but uh, you work with what you have. Uh, so that's a sterile probe cover. There's no excuse for not using one. Copious amount of gel is necessary for a curved transducer, but its application is fairly easy. And then as you can see, uh, you, if you have enough gel on your ultrasound probe cover and a probe, then uh, you have no problem then getting adequate images. This is a little shorter than I would preferred, but again, you work with what you have. So we apply a copious amount of ultrasound gel, and what we really want to determine, number one, is where's the midline. So here we position in, orienting ourselves, so that's going to be lateral right, lateral left on the ultrasound image, and the first step is to find the midline. And in here, what we can see in this particular image is actually, this is the midline. So let's just blow this up a little bit and discuss it very briefly because that is really where, um, where we want to be. Here we go. So we're going to uh, take that now and we're going to demonstrate uh, how to recognize the midline. So this is the first and most essential 
thing you can do when you're performing an ultrasound assisted spinal anesthetic. In here what we see is actually spinous process. Once you see the spinous process, all this is really the most important information. Spinous process will be usually about a centimeter or two below your skin level and underneath we don't see all that much here but what we know is this is the midline. The most important and the most essential actually element of using ultrasound to uh, aid in administration of neuroaxial anesthesia. The next thing that we want to do is now determine the level. So these are the uh, uh, transverse processes. You can count the transverse processes L5, L4, L3 just going up from the sacrum. That's one way to determine uh, all of the elements that you need to determine what the level of the uh, injection is. So this would be sacrum over here so we don't see actually any transverse processes lower down but this would be L5, this would be L4, this would be L3 and you can simply by doing that label where the level your desired level is. Usually uh, again it will be L4, L5. We continue playing the video and now we're going to actually do something different. Now we can demonstrate how you can also use a paramedial approach or paramedial scan to determine the levels. So what we see in this particular image here is now we're scanning the sacrum. So that's the sacrum over here. And now you're getting into the lamina. So this would be lamina here, lamina here, lamina here. So you can count L5, L4, L3, and so on again to determine the level of the spinal spinal injection. So again, the most important things with using ultrasound is the midline, the level, and the depth expected depth of the needle insertion. So let's look at that uh, in a minute. So these are the lamina, and once you see these lamina, if you angle a bit more medially, here you can see the spinal canal and now you can measure. In here the spinal canal from the skin to here is about five and a half centimeters. So this way we know what to expect and at which point in time our needle is expected to enter the intrathecal space if that's what we are really aiming for. So that's the spinal canal right there. Okay, so then once we determine where the midline is and where the level is, this is L4, L5, we label the midline up there, it, the procedure proceeds as usual. We don't use ultrasound again unless you need it because you do not really uh, gain much advantage by monitoring needle that just uh, makes the process so much more difficult. In here we're doing, using a uh, combined spinal epidural technique and uh, I'm using a, a loss of resistance to air as you keep pushing your uh, plunger inside and eventually you lose the resistance and there after the procedure is fairly straightforward there comes a spinal needle for the CSC component to it and again as you could see the epidural needle the depth at which we entered the epidural needle is about what we expected based on our um, uh, image during the ultrasound scanning. This particular needle actually is a slightly bit different but as you push it you find the first resistance at the point at which the needle meets the tip of the epidural needle and then as we overcome that obstacle as the needle enters the epidural space the next thing will be a loss of resistance as the needle enters the intrathecal space and then clearly that's recognized by appearance of the CSF. So again what we just briefly reviewed is the ultrasound assisted neuroaxial technique where we use ultrasound to assess three things. Number one is the midline, number two is the level of the needle insertion and number three is the depth or expected depth of the intrathecal space so we can anticipate how long we need to place the needle inside.